So we're going to start with this eye study here. This is the reference photograph that I'll be doing it from. And I'm going to draw it out by hand, so I'm not concerned about getting a deadly accurate likeness as, as much as, as if I was drawing this portrait uh, as part of a commission or uh, for something in my portfolio. So this is going to be more about how we start to build up those flesh tones, how we start to build darks on top of lights. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's just mark in a width and then just look roughly at the height, make this easy for ourselves by just taking a line roughly across. And then if you've seen my blog post on how to draw curves, how to deal with those, um, you know that we're going to break them into straight lines. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a reference to it in the course materials. So addressing curves with straight lines is so much easier because you can figure out the angles of those um, curves much more easily. So I'm going to see this one as a straight line. Just looking at the angle there, taking that down. Even for this curve at the bottom, you can break it into straight lines. So where is it? Is it at its straightest? It's about there. And then you can take that up into this side. And then I like to put the pupil in next. Uh, or the iris, sorry, so the whole centre of the eye. And the most important thing, the best tip that I can give you for drawing the centre of an eye is to look at the negative space created by the white of the eye either side. So just get your um, iris in loosely at first and then just have a look at the negative uh, shape made by the white of the eye. So I can see that the eyelashes come down here on that side I'm reasonably happy with the shape there. I think that's certainly accurate enough for this little study that we're doing. And the other tip, the other thing to look out for as well, is to make sure that you've got the same amount of the centre of the eye, the iris showing, as is on your reference photograph. It's quite easy to show this as maybe um, more of it being beneath the surface of the eyelid. So the eyelid is around here, for example, to, to draw this too big, so more of it is underneath. And that is going to affect the lightness. So I can see that that's roughly about right, you know, that's, that will do for this study. And then let's just make a mark for where the shadow area here is going to be, just to get some orientation on that. Again, just looking at straight lines uh, and angles. And then there's always this line that you will see uh, above the upper eyelid, so we can put that in as well. And then there's a few down the bottom as well, but I'm not going to bother putting those in. We can maybe add them later on with the shading stage. So the next thing to put in is the eyebrow. So just look at the distance between, obviously, the top of the eye and the bottom of the eyebrow there. And it really is just a shape. So it's up from here. Looking at the angle. So take it further than you think. And then look at the break point. It's right on the outside of the eye, which is going to be around here. Look at this shape here that's made. So I think mine needs to be a little bit flatter. And then you can look at the angle that the eyebrow comes down. And you can even look at this angle here. So how does that angle with that one compare? So it's going to finish somewhere around that region. OK, and then obviously we've got the centre of the eye. One of the mistakes that I see uh, more often than you would expect is people, some, for some reason, put this too far down. I think they want to put it in the centre of, you know, the centre line of the eye. But more often than not, it is towards the top of the eye. So just pay attention to that, notice it, observe it, see if that's the case in the reference that you're working from. So I think that will do for the outline drawing. So now that we're coming on to the rendering stage, putting those flesh tones in, putting the centre of the, the centre colour of the eye, the blues and greens that are in there, what do I want to do? Well, before I lay any colour down, I'm going to select six, eight, maximum ten pencils just for this study. I'm going to close the tin and we're going to stick to those colours. So the way that I want you to think about this is to start with the lightest colour first. Now that is nearly always going to be white. So you're always going to want to have a white pastel pencil in pretty much anything that you do with pastel pencils. So we've got our white pencil. The next lightest colour I've got 
is a light flesh tone. So the lightest flesh tone that I can see, this is in the set of 36, but it's also in the set of 24 that I mentioned. So let's put that in there. I'm gonna stick with the slightly darker flesh tone that I used for drawing out the eye. That's a number 131. Uh, this lighter flesh tone is a 132. And then if we just move them to one side, I can also see some areas of yellow within this as well. So I'm gonna choose a couple of yellows. I'm gonna go for the lightest yellow that I've got in my set, which is a 102. That's like a lemon yellow color. Let's bring that down so you can see it. And then we'll go for a more canary yellow. I've actually got a number of different options that I can choose from here. I could choose any one of them and they'd work perfectly well. This is a 185. So we've got five pencils to uh, keep us going there. The next one I'm gonna choose is a blue for the center of the eye. So I'm gonna go for a lighter blue first. And this is a 140, it's like a baby blue color. And then I can see a little bit of turquoise blue in there. So let's choose uh, a turquoise blue, see if there's one we've got available. Well, we've got the one that I burnt down with the um, electric pencil sharpener, that's a 155. There are other colors I could go for. If you don't have a turquoise blue, you could just go for a, a, a darker blue like that. Again, it doesn't matter. I can see flecks of different color in the, uh, within the eyes, but I'm gonna ignore those for now. I can always come back last thing and put those in. So that's seven. So let's give ourselves a maximum of three more. It's always good to have a pinkier, a darker flesh tone. So something that's heading towards maybe a bit of a brown color even. So I'm gonna choose, this is a 177. So that's a brown color. That will do for the shadow area under the eye. I think we can use that for that. And it will also use for the, the foundation of the eyebrow and the eyelashes. You do want um, either a black or a very dark gray just to put those real strong colors in. So let's get that in. So we've got two, four, six, eight. We've got nine colors there. Let's bring those in so you can see them. So the last color, if I give myself one more to choose from, well, I'm gonna go for another flesh tone and maybe a bit more of a reddy flesh tone. So a bit more of a rosy, reddy, rosy color, just so we can add a hint of that in. So this is a, let's have a look. This is a one four, a one nine four, sorry. So there's the 10 pencils I'm gonna use. This one I could have gone for, there's a maroon color there. So we could use this one nine two. Again, it doesn't matter if I was doing this study a second time, I might use a different set of colors. So I'm gonna close that pencil box, put these to one side and we can get going. So I've got my pencils to hand, I've got my sharpener ready, my little uh, tub that I'm gonna put my sharpenings in so I don't get lazy and we're ready to go. Now the first color that I'm gonna lay down is the lightest color and this is the general principle for pastel pencils. So you're gonna work from light to dark. You can put lights over darks um, towards the end but it's more difficult. So we're gonna start with the lightest and that's the white. So what I'm gonna do is just lay a light layer of this white all around the eye, wherever the flesh tone is. Now, when I say light layer, what I am using very light pressure because what I want to avoid is completely obliterating all of the paper surface below, okay? So I want some of that paper to show through. And the reason for that is that it's gonna allow subsequent layers of the pastel pencil um, just to sit a little bit more vibrantly on top of this white. If you really push the white into the paper and then you put colors on top of it, they tend to become, I find, um, a little bit too chalky, a little bit too light, slide off the surface a little bit too easily. So I want to take this through to the eyebrow because even though the bulk of it is quite dark, there are areas of flesh tone that are showing through. I want to be quite careful around here. This is a, a flesh color, this upper eyelid. So I want to put that in, but without disturbing the, um, the outline drawing that I've done too much. Okay, so I've got that light layer down. Now what I'm doing is, as the pencil's moving, I want to get a feel for where the lighter areas are. And I'm going to increase the pressure. So I can see just on the cheek area, I don't want to take this out too far because we're just containing it to the eye for now but I can see how that's a lighter area, so I'm gonna use a bit more pressure there. A bit more pressure around here. Definitely leave off this area, because that's darker. 
bit more pressure around here you can see you see that area there's a little bit lighter take that through to the eyebrow okay and that'll do so the next color we can lay down is that light flesh tone so this is a 132 same principle so you're not pushing the pastel pencil with any kind of pressure at all. I mean, I'm holding that much lighter than I would hold, uh, say, a toothbrush. I'm letting the pencil do the work. I'm not using my uh, hand and wrist to push the pencil into the paper at all. Very, very little effort. What this is doing is blending uh, the two colors together. So it has that double effect of both laying color down and blending the layer down uh, beneath it. So you can see how far back down the pencil I'm holding this side of the pencil nib. So I'm starting to get a flat edge there. You can actually work really quickly. If I was doing this just for myself, I'd work much quicker than I am at the moment. It'd be quite loose at this stage. And then the next color, another light color. So we can see some yellow. I don't know if you can see that. There's some yellow going on there. There's some yellow around this area here. This is not the right yellow for this. It's too much of a ye uh, lemon yellow. That's more of an orangey yellow. But we're just gonna build them up slightly. It's nice to get all those subtle different colors into your portraits. That's what's gonna give them just that much more interest. And then let's just start to add a few of the darker values in. So let's have a look at the area around the eye here, so the inside of the eye, just underneath the eye. She's, this lady looks like she's got a bit of eye makeup on. But I do want to just get a hint of um, stronger flesh colours in there. So this is the 194. This is quite a, um, quite a maroon colour, not particularly representative of what is on the photograph. As I say, it doesn't matter because we're not trying to recreate exact colours. We're looking more for the lightness or darkness of those colors. Very, very light pressure, super light pressure. So I can't emphasize how lightly I'm actually using that pastel pencil. Okay, and then I've got a slightly darker flesh tone. So this is the uh, 131. Just starting to bring up any areas that are darker. I'm gonna leave that for now as a lighter area just so I can continue to see the shape of it as I work through the draw, and I don't wanna lose that too much. I can see this area here is dark, isn't it? So this is shadow here. So let's strengthen that quite a bit. Take it through into the eyebrow. So I've got the brown pencil here. This is a 177. So I'm just gonna look for where it is so this lady's eye is heavily outlined in got eyeliner and mascara. Remember the observational process. So yes, it is a sketch, but use it as an opportunity to practice your observational skills. So I can see that the base of the eyelashes are quite thick. If you have a look at, especially if you see the reference photograph, if you print it out, this line here is a really thick line. So it goes almost touches the pupil and it's at its thickest here and the eyelashes come out and it gets thicker as it moves to the uh, outer edge. I'm not drawing in individual eyelashes, I'm not concerned about those yet. And then this lady's eye is quite dark underneath. So light pressure still, always light pressure. You won't be using strong pressure until right at the very end when you put your strongest darks and your strongest lights in. So I'm just drawing in there what would be the line of the eyelashes. And you can see I've left that little area of um, flesh tone there. It's gonna represent the inner eyelid. Okay, and then let's just put back in the line above the eye. And then while I've got this pencil in my hand, I can add some color, some tone into the shadow area of the eye. Still, I keep saying it, but still very light pressure. Just softening off as you get further out. So you're just noticing how darker on the inside and then gradually softens off around the outside there. And then just down under the eye here. So see how it goes to that triangle shape. 
and then we can strengthen this area here as well. And then let's just put the lightest of pressure just to add some stronger tone underneath the eye as well. So I'm not worried about all the individual lines, I just want to get the area in as a whole. Okay, so let's go to that, uh, I called it a canary yellow, this is a 185. So I'm just looking where I can see those yellow values, those yellow colours, I should say. Definitely some round here. Okay, so let's have a little go at the inside of the eye. So I've got the light blue, the 140, and I'm going to go over that line that I put in initially, but I'm going to observe. So I'm not going to trust the marks that I've put down already. I want to look at this shape here. How does that compare? This is all great observational practice. How does this shape here compare to my reference? What is the point? What's the point like here? So is that a, a really sharp slither-like point? Is it a thicker point? Just have a look at the shape, particularly that is made right in that area, the same for that area as well. Now, for the eye itself, we can start to fill that in. So using this lighter blue, you can use a bit more pressure than I've been using. And if you always make your marks in this spiral effect, what you'll get is some of them showing through just gives that nice bit of extra texture, a nice bit of extra mark making that really describes the characteristics of the center of the eye. I'm leaving some space there for the white highlight. It's always best if you can put white straight onto the paper, not on top of uh, pastel already. It'll be much brighter that way. So if we pick up the white, put that in before we forget. So as much pressure as you like now, much pressure as you feel you can get away with without snapping the pencil. Got a little bit either side there. we go, lots of pressure. And then for the center of the eye, before I go straight to black, I'm gonna put in a layer of this turquoisey blue, this is 155. I'm not gonna use a lot of pressure. So the general rule is, if you want a color to be really vibrant and strong and show through, use a lot of pressure, but accept you're not putting a lot of uh, other pastel on top of it. If you want a colour to subtly show through underneath and to be able to put stronger colours on top of it, then use a lot less pressure. So that blue's gone down. Just going to actually extend the edge. It would be nice if the edge was showing around. And then take your black. As much pressure as you like, as you can get away with. Black will go over this nicely. So you want to have a sharper pencil than I've got here. This is quite blunt. So for details around, especially around the center of the eye, you want it nice and sharp. And then with your strong turquoise blue, let's put the outer edge of the eye in. Again, just observing, still observing, always observing. And I'm just looking how there's that darker outer rim to the eye there. And then I can start to take the colors in as well. So. Don't worry that you're going to be going over most of this blue, this lighter blue underneath, that's okay. All you're aiming to do is just leave a few flecks here and there for that to show through. Okay, with the black, if you've got a dark grey, you could use that. Go around the outer edge. I really should sharpen this pencil. And then strengthening the line of the um, of the eyelashes there. And just notice how this area here is really, really dark. 
And this is all in shadow. And then just to break the, um, the black up a little bit, if you just put a tiny hint of brown, the brown that you used for earlier, this is the 177, any brown would do. And it just breaks that black up a little bit. You can put a little flecks of brown in. There are actually other colours in there, some uh, brighter yellows and greens. We could put those in right at the very end. Okay, so with the black, let's just start to strengthen this um, bottom eyelash, or this, sorry, I should say top eyelash. And you're not going to put individual eyelashes in, but just notice how, if you were to look at the base of this shape, it's got this uneven edge to it before the actual lashes come out. So just try and recreate that roughly with your uh, black pencil that is going to be sharper than mine. There we go. So a little bit of white now into the white of the eye. Light pressure because I don't want this to be really white. And we're going to have to tone this down as well. And then with your black again, really, really light pressure, you're going to continue the shadow that we've put here that goes over the top of this eye, or the center of the eye, into the white of the eye. So you can see it on the uh, photograph there. It's actually very dark on the photograph. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. So just light pressure. Same on this side. Following the line of the eye. And then just gradually softening it off. So you're really knocking back that white. It really isn't a white colour at all. It's uh, more of a grey colour. Very, very light pressure. So this is a case if you had all your pencils available to you, you'd start looking for a, a light grey and uh, maybe a different colour to put in there. But the black's fine, just adjust the amount of pressure that you're going to use. Your pinky red, I can see a little bit of pink on the inside of the eye there, on the inside of the white of the eye. Just adds a nice little bit of colour, just where the blood vessels might be. This area here is quite pink, isn't it? And it's quite dark as well, so let's just strengthen that bottom eyelid there. And this area in here is really, uh, really dark, but a, a strong red as well. So quite a lot of pressure to put that in. And I've just left the slightest little line because I can see that there's some nice highlights in there. So we put those in in a second. And you can probably see how that's a little bit too pink. So this is quite a muted colour. It's like a brownie pink. But the way that we create that is by putting the, the base colour down first, the colour that you can see, and the lighter colour. And then just with a more neutral colour, so a brown, for example, you could do it with a grey or... Or, or the black even, you just mute that colour by going over the top of it. More pressure here just for the base of where these eyelashes are going to be. And then we can actually just adjust the shape of the eye here. It's a little bit thicker with some nice reds just coming through there. Just giving a hint now of these creases under the eye. You want to blend some colours in there, so there's a bit too much pink in there. Anytime you want to blend, just go over with your white, and that will soften everything and blend it together. This kind of acts like, in this sense, acts like a burnishing tool in coloured pencils. So if you're used to using one of those, then you'll find this uh, quite similar. Point of the pencil, okay? So I'm vertically down, and this is going to get me a nice, sharp and small dotted highlight just in the corner of the eye there. There we go, Got a little bit of a one there, it's a bit softer. So the next thing I want to do is just get this line in here. Now it is tempting just to go in with a black or a dark brown um, and to almost outline things, but that's what it will look like, it will look like an outline. And that's how you draw cartoons, it's not necessarily how you draw something that's a little bit more realistic. What we want to do is to build that line up with some subtle colours. 
So the first colour I'm going to use is a red. So it's this crimsony colour, 194. So I'm going to lay that one down first. And then with the brown that we've used before, I can start to use more pressure. See a shadow area there. Strengthen this shadow now. And then as you strengthen that shadow, you'll see that surrounding areas need strengthening. So this is now really light pressure. Just notice how the shadow continues, but it just softens off around that area. So just scumbling the pencil. Okay, and then we can go back to the black and start to really strengthen the line that's in there. Now, because you've put quite a bit of color on beforehand with the brown and the red that we've just done, you're not gonna get this jet black um, outline, which is exactly what you want. You don't want it to be a jet black outline. All it's gonna do is just strengthen the colors that are underneath. And then as it's progressing and you're starting to get some of those stronger darks in, just look to see if there's anywhere else that you want to add some more of the pinky flesh tones in. So for example, I'm just going to bring this area up, just add a little bit more uh, warmth into this area here. This bit I want to keep quite light. I want to take some warmer flesh tone through here. Don't forget it's going to blend the colours that are already down now. This area now is too light, isn't it? Yes, it does need to be lighter than everywhere else, but it's too light at the moment. We can just put a bit more warmth into that. Let's get our brown and strengthen this area. In fact, I want to add a bit more yellow. So let's just experiment adding some of that in. This is the whole reason for doing these sketchbook studies that you can just experiment. It doesn't matter what it looks like. And when you find something that works, then you can start to use it in a final piece. And then I think it's time to put the eyebrow in. So with this, just make sure that you've got those flesh colours underneath, particularly where the, um, the hairs aren't as thick. I can see just some around there and there. Just tone those down a little bit, a bit too pink. And then dark brown pencil, 177, whatever you chose as your dark brown. Um, what I do is I look for the thickest part because I can get that in quickly. Don't have to worry about putting individual hairs in. And just look for the shape of that, get that in quite quick. And then where I see individual hairs, just drawing down from the base of the hair. Just noticing how they grow. I want to show individual lines there. This area here is a lot softer, so I'm going to use a lighter pressure. And then if you want to, just with your flesh colour again, you can just work in some individual uh, strands back into, back into the eyebrow. And then black pencil, dark grey, if you're going to use a dark grey. It's not going to come out black on top of this uh, brown that you've already laid down. So you can afford to use quite a bit of pressure here. Okay, so we're coming towards the end of it now, I think. While we've got the black in our hand, we can do the eyelashes. But what I want you to do is sharpen your pencil. So we've got a nice sharp point. And the way that, or oh, good tip for doing eyebrows, the way that I tend to do them, after I've just cleaned all that black off my hands, is to look for some of the major ones that you can see and to put them in. So this goes back to that clock face idea that I've talked about on a number of occasions, instead of doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is quite easy to get lost, but some too close together, start with one, say maybe in the middle that you can see, and then one on the outer edge, looking at the angle that that grows at, and then one on the inner edge, 
and then it becomes that much easier to fill everything in between. Now these ones here are quite soft focused. Let's not forget the ones on the bottom row. You get a few on the inner side of the eye there. There's not too many here, just the odd one or two. And then as you get to here, just notice the way that they grow so they've started to move into a different direction now. Some of them cross over each other, not all grown in one direction. And then as you get towards the end, just Take a little step back and have a look if there's any areas that you want to slightly change the colour, maybe add some more colour to, uh, maybe bring in line with other areas of the picture. Go with the lightest colour flesh tone that you've got, the, uh, what was it, the 132, and just pick out any areas there that are a bit lighter that you can see. So you're just negatively drawing in these darker lines by leaving space between the lighter areas. And then with your white over the top of those, so don't forget because you've put some colour down already, you're not going to get a brilliant white, which is, which is good. You don't want that. So you remember I said that we're going to stick to a limited range of pastels, 6, 8, 10 for this study, probably could have got away with 8 quite easily. So now at this stage where it's essentially finished, this is where you can indulge yourself, this is where you can get a little bit playful, it doesn't matter if you mess things up a little bit, um, you know, if you want a, a picture of this for say, uh, your social media account, take your photograph now and then continue playing on, it doesn't matter if you mess things up. So we can Add a little bit of uh, red in here for these creases, maybe um, try bringing those up a little bit and seeing whether that's going to make it look too overworked. Is it going to make her look too old in comparison to what she really is? Because that very often can be the case when you try and put every single little uh, detail and crease and line in. So you can see what that looks like. There's also some colours in the eye, so I can maybe take my brightest yellow that I'd picked out and just put a few flecks of the white uh, of the yellow in there. They're probably going to turn a bit green, which would be fine with me. It'll look quite nice. If there's any other colours, I could maybe see some a bit of blue just on, in the white of the eye. So very very faintly touch some of that in. You can put that in. And this is where, if you want to, you can start dipping into the rest of your tin of pastel pencils, because you've taken all of the or much of the stress out of the colour. Um, decision process by sticking to that limited palette. Okay so I'm going to call that done for this eye and then we're going to move on and do a quick study on the nose.